In this video, I'm going to be calculating the Christoffel symbols for the round metric. Okay, so we're going to be given the metric G, the round metric, equals... Okay, we're going to have a big matrix. So we're going to have 1 R squared on the diagonal R squared sine squared of phi 1 all the way down until R squared sine squared phi 1 up until sine squared of phi n minus 1. Because we're going to have 1, 2, 3, all the way up until n plus 1. Okay, so this is an n plus 1 dimensional manifold. That's exactly what we want. Okay, so let's calculate the Christoffel symbols. So we're giving the equation, these are the standard ones, Christoffel symbols of the second kind, gamma i j k equals one half g, okay, and just in case you didn't know, the rest are zeros up here. It's g, then i, and then m, dummy index, m, until we have um, g, okay, we're going to have Keep the J, replace it with K with the dummy index, and then we're going to have move K past the comma, plus G, dumb, replace J with the dummy index, put in K, and then move J past the comma, move J past the comma, and then minus G, we're going to have JK normally, and then put the M past the comma. Okay, so what does this mean? This means the inverse matrix, or the inverse matrix of this, okay, and the inverse matrix of a diagonal matrix is one over the things on the diagonal, okay? So the inverse matrix, I am the component, then G, J, M, so right here, we're going to have a matrix, where we go down each column, because M fixes the column, we're doing... Here, the mth column. So we go down the mth column here, and we derive it in respect to the place of the column here, because k corresponds with the columns on the gamma. Okay, so we go down the mth column here, we derive it in respect to whatever column we're in here, and then if we're in 2, we derive it in respect to phi 1, 1, we derive it in respect to r, and so on. Okay? And that's how... That one works. And then the other one, we do the same thing, but with rows. So for this one, we go across the rows, deriving the mth row. And then in this one, we're just going to derive each individual one of these in respect to m. And then we're, we're good. Okay, so let's calculate the first one, gamma 1. Gamma 1 is going to be 1 half times g11. One one. Well, 1 over 1 is 1 times, okay, we're going to have gjm, so we're going to go down this column and derive it in respect to k, but that's always going to be zero, because these are all 1, 0, 0, 0, those are all constants, so we're good, those are all, that's all zero, so that's the zero matrix, same with the other one, because 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, that's zero, then minus, we're going to have an actual matrix, we're deriving it in respect to the first one, right, so we're deriving it in respect to r, so we're going to have a 0 there, then 2r there, and then 2r sine squared phi 1, all the way down until we get 2r sine squared phi 1 up until sine squared phi n minus 1. Right. And so from this, we get, distribute that 1 half in, and we get a zero, and then zeros everywhere else, obviously. So until we get zero, negative r sine squared phi one, just negative r, sorry. Negative r, and then negative r sine squared phi one, all the way down until we get negative r sine squared phi one, up until sine squared of phi n minus one. That's the end of that. 
right? And that's how we calculate it. Just to give you the idea, and that's a very specific one that's very different because R is in all of them except for the first diagonal. Oh, yes, and the reason why we only do G11 is because this is diagonal. Everything else would be zero. So we only have to worry about when I is equal to N. Okay, now what I'm going to do is calculate the more general one. Gamma I for I greater than 1. Okay, cool. So now we're going to have gamma. Okay, I'll move my I in, I'll write my I in blue. And we're going to have 1 half. Okay, so we're going to do GII, because that's the only one we're worrying about. And so if you remember that, that's just going to be R to the negative 2, sine to the negative 2, phi 1, up until sine to the negative 2, phi I, minus 2. Okay? And then we're going to multiply this by some big matrices. And the matrices are going to be, okay, so we're going down the ith row, the ith column, and we're deriving it in respect to whatever column we're in. So for this first one, it's going to be zeros all the way down until we get to the ith one. We're deriving in respect to the first, so that's just going to be 2r sine squared phi 1 up until sine squared phi i minus 2, all the way down until we get back to zero. Then in the next one, we're going to have zeros all the way down until we get to 2r sine squared, not, we're going to have 2r squared. We're driving in this in respect to phi 1 now. So we're going to have 2 sine of phi 1, cosine of phi 1, all the way up until sine squared of phi n minus 1. Zero. Continue this down until we get zero, zero, all the way down until 2r squared sine squared phi 1 up until cosine phi i minus 2, not n, i minus 2, i minus 2, cosine, uh, sine of i minus 2. Phi i minus 2. Right? All the way down until we get 0. And then everything past that is 0. Because I ran out of room, I can't write it. <laughs> right? And then you can imagine doing the same exact thing, but for the rows. So we're going to have zeros until we get to 2r sine squared of phi. And let me just label up here where the, where this is going. Okay, so this right here is the ith row. And then right here, we're going up until the um, i minus 1th column. Okay, and right here, we're going to have the ith column, right? Until we get to the i, i minus one row, at which point everything past it is going to be zero. Okay, so you get the idea. Now what we're going to do is we're going to erase all of this, and I'm just going to write what this is so far. Right? I'm not going to worry about that other term yet. Okay? I'm just going to write what we have so far. Okay, so if write this out on paper. 
Okay, go back, write it out on paper, do the distribution yourself, and put that multiplication in. Do it all the baby steps. I'm not going to do them because it takes very, very long and a lot of room, of which I don't have. Right? If I had like a big chalkboard, I'd be fine with writing all that down. But not what I have right here. So now we're going to have a matrix. We're going to have a matrix where we're going to have zeros all the way down until we get to the ith. Right? Right here is going to be the ith. And then we're going to have there 2r sine squared phi 1 up until sine squared of phi n. But we distributed that thing in, right? We distributed that, that thing in, right, that got rid of that 2, okay? So it got rid of the 2, right? Got rid of the 2 with the 1 half, and it got rid of all those sine squareds, and we're going to have r over r squared, which gives us r to the negative 1. Okay. If you want to... See it. Uh, we're going to have r to the negative 1 all the way down until 0 again. And 0, 0, all the way down until 0. And then we're going to get rid of all those sine squareds. We're going to get rid of the r squared. We're going to get rid of the 2. And then we're going to have sine of phi 1 times cosine of phi 1 over sine squared of phi 1. Just imagine this, okay? Write it out on paper. Look at the matrix. Imagine this. Until we get cotangent of phi 1 or cosine of phi 1 over sine of phi 1. Okay, so then we continue this down, right? Until right here we get cotangent of phi i minus 2. And this is in the i minus 1th right there. And then right here, okay, we're going to have zeros all the way down. And then right down here in this row, this column, this column, the ith column, right, we're going to have the same thing, but now vertical. Right? Until we get to cotangent of phi i minus 2 right there. And then we're going to have a 0 all the way down until 0. Right there is the um, i minus 1. Okay. That's fine and dandy. Okay, now we have to calculate the other part that I uh, didn't do at first. So we're going to have minus that same coefficient times the matrix. Okay, what's their matrix going to be? Well, it's going to be this derived in respect to the ith, which doesn't occur until we get to the i minus 1th. Is that I minus one? Um, two with one. Yeah, that's I minus one. And so we're driving in respect to the ith component, which doesn't actually occur until we get to the I plus one. Yeah, until we get to the I plus one. So we're going to have zeros all the way down until we get to the I plus one. I plus one. Okay, so that's going, then at that point, it's going to be a 2r squared, the sine squared phi 1 up until we get to sine of, of phi i minus 1 cosine of phi i minus 1. 
And then on the next term in the diagonal, it's going to be 2r squared, the exact same stuff right there, until we get sine squared of phi i. Right? And we continue that down, right, until we get to the bottom. Right? You know, bottom term, multiplying it up until sine squared. And then, you can imagine doing that same multiplication out on paper. Right? I recommend you do do it out on paper. So that we can continue this upper matrix. So that we get... So that we get... Right here, I'm going to remove that side of the matrix. And then right on the diagonal, right below that zero, is the i plus one to i plus one. -th, right? So... We're going to have the i plus 1th, i plus 1th right there. I'm going to write it. Okay, it doesn't look good on this matrix. I'll uh, add in another. Okay, I'll add in another part of this matrix. So another set of zeros. And then I'll add in another one right here. Right? Until we get right here, which is actually going to be negative, because you're subtracting sine of phi i minus 1 cosine of phi i minus 1. Yeah, so until we get this, at which point we continue multiplying it all the way down. Okay, I'll do dot, 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 zero, dot, 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 zero, all the way across until there. That's like a little matrix. Zero, zero, dot, 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 zero, 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 dot, dot, dot. Zero right down until we get right here, which is going to be the same exact thing. Right, this thing, the i minus 1th cosine sine, until we have sine squared of phi i up until sine squared of phi n, n minus 1. And that's, that's it right there. So, going down the diagonal, you keep multiplying it by sine squared of phi i, then sine squared of phi i plus 1 for the next one. That's what you multiply it. And you get this, and we're done. Oh my lord, I'm... Oh!